It's kind of anticlimactic because it's empty. <laughs> uh, but just imagine that you're Ira Dilworth and, you know, Emily Carr has just died and there was a note pinned to the top here and you open it up and it is filled to the brim with sketchbooks, journals, photographs, uh, cartoon sketches, memorabilia, books, um, and just in case the label on the outside uh, got lost, Carr has left a label on the inside. It says, at my death, please send this box and contents intact to Mr. Ira Dilworth, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, Vancouver, BC. And it's signed Emily Carr. And all the way through, she kept noting, I guess in case somebody went through the contents, and she said, bag and contents for Ira Dilworth. At my death, Emily Carr. Okay. Uh, my name is Catherine Bridge. I work at the Royal BC Museum. I am a deputy director and head of uh, Knowledge, Academic Relations, and Atlas. My job here uh, is very different from when I started. I started um, working in the BC Archives many years ago and it was then that I discovered the Emily Carr collection. It's a collection that has held me and kept me working here uh, my career. When you're looking at a finished masterpiece on a wall in a gallery, uh, I'm sure a lot of questions go through your head like, wow, where did they, the artist get the idea for that? And how did they make it look so real? Or how did they make it look so impressive? And what makes this sing where something else doesn't? So all of those questions can be answered in part by understanding how the artist actually got to that stage. And they got to that stage through uh, the experiences of art schools and different training influence of people they met or artists that they liked but they also got it just by practice and by uh, in the case of a landscape artist going out into the land and sketching and trying to find ways of capturing what it is they're looking to capture and and you experiment uh, you take a piece of paper you take a sketchbook and you just try to try to get things down and oftentimes in the in the landscape you don't have a lot of time you don't have days and days to stay at the same spot so what you do is you try to make notes for yourself do things in shorthand and then take what you've done back to your studio and work um, up your work of art from from that so the sketchbooks that we hold and there are I believe 12 um, different sketchbooks are filled with these instances where you can see she sat at a spot and she looked around her and she tried to capture things. She's written little tiny notes in the margins or sometimes uh, blocked out information about texture or color or light um, or the feeling of movement she found. There's, there's all of these little scribbled notes as well as just uh, lines that you can see that sometimes in the sketchbook she tried again and again and she worked through things. So by analyzing the field sketches and then some of the preparatory work uh, that she did in in the studio you can really understand what you're seeing on the wall and a curator working on an exhibit would like to convey that information uh, to the people who are standing there wondering all those questions so so um, understanding how she built it um, and how she figured things out uh, be, then becomes part of the label and uh, you know, is more informative than just knowing what the title was and the finished date. Most of these are not Emily Carr's. On this particular rack, there's two. The one that's my favorite painting in the whole collection is this one right down here. It's called Pines in May, and it's a sketch that she did probably in the field, uh, probably at a Squamalt Lagoon, and it's when she was going through a phase where she used, um, she was trying a new medium. She was trying to capture life and movement in nature, and the way she thought she could do that was to take uh, 
house paints and mix the house paints with gasoline to make them more fluid and then to use with a, a, a brush uh, very quick uh, movements to capture the movement of air, the movements of clouds, the movements of uh, grass and the trees. And so this Pines in May is all about growth and it's all about movement of growth. It's about spring air, it's about sunshine. And you can almost sort of see everything move. But she, uh, she used newspaper uh, that she got from the, the local uh, newspaper office uh, in big sheets and it's the absolute cheapest paper of all. And it's a conservation nightmare, this, this medium that with gasoline and oil paints on this very acidic, cheap paper. But um, this painting has been conserved and it's very small. And for me, that's, that would be my return, the present. Somebody can give me the point, I like that. <laughs> <laughs>